So the past three weeks, you have gone through different activities, uh, different learning dialogues that you have been able to learn different concepts. And of course, in the past, in the previous uh, learning dialogues, you have learned about the different multimedia principles that we use when we are creating e-learning content or engaging content for our students. Now, this is a reflection spot. Let down uh, at least two features of each of the learning dialogues that you have seen. And then once you are done, uh, resume the video and proceed with the next session. So uh, many of you might have come up with different features of the learning dialogues they have seen. Uh, so some of you might have said that, okay, the learning dialogues were consisting of only one concept that was discussed at length. And some of you might have said that the learning dialogues were shorter, probably some, some had six minutes or some eight minutes or 10 minutes. And some of you might have said that, okay, the learning dialogues had a lot of in, in video activities such as questions or pause points where you need to think and reflect. And some might have said that, okay, these learning dialogues had a lot of explanations that were very easy for us to understand and to follow. So the lesson became much more easier. Now, this brings to a discussion about another principle that is called the segmenting principle, which is of importance as well when you are creating e-learning content. Okay, now imagine you have a lesson like what you see here, a long lesson, maybe a one hour lesson, or a, uh, maybe a, a 60 minute lesson. Now you present this lesson to your students or for one hour in a class, or for one hour in an learning format. What do you think will happen to your students? Just take a moment and think of the cases when you present a long lesson uh, to your students and think of the actions that your students do when they are following up your lesson. So it could be that uh, when your students are following up your long lesson, uh, there could be probably some of them are becoming sleepy or some of them could uh, probably they could be overloaded with some, uh, some of the concepts that they are following up because uh, you are presenting it in a long, probably in a format that is not easy to understand for them. And some of them could, be, could not be following because uh, probably, uh, probably the concepts that are in the lesson themselves are not well explained because you have complete each and everything in one unit. So what we, we do in segmenting principles is that you need to break a long lesson or a continuous lesson into smaller segments that are much more easier for your students to, to learn. So break your long unit or long lesson into smaller, smaller chunks into a way in, in, in such a way that your students can be able to follow. So look into a diagram here. We have a lesson that is long in nature, so you can see how it is. Then we are, we are breaking it into smaller pieces like concept number one, then concept number two, concept number three, and concept number four which implies therefore that the student will be able to follow your lesson much more easily because you are explaining each and everything that is required to be understood on that particular unit or that particular small piece. That is what you call a segmenting principle. The segmenting principle states that you, you need to break your continuous lesson or unit into small, small chunks that becomes easier for your students to be able to learn. And, and of course, breaking or chunking into smaller pieces depends on many factors in, uh, that could be looking into like uh, where do you think the lesson could be much more easier to understand? Probably things like uh, which lesson would start first before the other lesson, or which unit would come first, or which concept would come first before the next lesson. So, but all in all, what you need to understand is that whenever you have a long lesson or you are developing your lesson, remember to break it into smaller, smaller pieces. And between each piece, remember to include uh, control buttons such as continue button that will allow your student to be able to navigate from one point to the other or from one unit that she or he has finished leading into the next unit. Breaking the lesson into smaller pieces or smaller units or smaller chunks has advantages as well. First of all, it allows the learner to be able to follow the process or to follow the units much more easily. So they can be able to learn at their own speed and be able to ingest or digest the information that is coming from the unit much more easily because it's much more simply made and easy to understand. But again, it, helps, it becomes a method for them to be able to understand the units because it offers uh, each unit has a different, uh, a different lesson or a different topic that is covered in that particular unit. So breaking it into smaller pieces allows your student to be able to learn at his own pace, but understanding the content or the concept much more easier compared to when the unit was pre presented in a long form or long lesson. So now let us look into this example. This is an example from physics, which explains about the formation of lightning, so lightning formation. So if you see this picture image here, you could be able to see that uh, you have um, houses, you have clouds, you have charges, positive and negative charges being formed in there. And then you are giving your students to be able to make sense of the image that is presented. So in this image, what you see here is actually, the teacher is actually, actually trying to explain about the formation of lightning, 
where he starts uh, probably, he shows how positive charges are being form, formed in the clouds, and then the negative charges coming up the cloud, down the cloud, positive charges going up, and then how a stepped ladder moves from the ground all the way to up, and how a negative charge moves from the, the cloud coming down to the lower part. And again, at the same time, showing how the uh, lightning is actually being formed. But all this information is actually presented in only one image, as you can see. And this becomes a, a problem because students cannot be able to understand all the concepts that are happening in this particular image that you can see. So the best way to be able to solve such a problem and allow your students to be able to learn better is that you need to break this particular unit, uh, this particular topic into smaller, smaller chunks or smaller, smaller blocks that will allow your students to be able to learn better. And this is how it can be done. So now look into the next image here, which shows the different stages at which lightning can, be, can occur. Then this image here shows the different block diagrams, uh, the different parts of how the previous image has, in, has been broken into smaller, smaller, smaller pieces that allows the learner to be able to chew the information, be able to understand the information much more easier, and then to be able to explain the process with ease. So uh, from this diagram, you can be able to see that the diagram is divided into uh, smaller, smaller units. So this first unit could be explaining about the formation of charges. The second unit could be or explaining about how positive and negative charges are actually being moving um, to the top and to the bottom of the cloud. And the third unit could be explaining about how uh, the formation of the negative charges on the ground makes sense. And the fourth part could be explaining about how the ladder is being formed from the ground up to the cloud to, to make sense to connect. On the next graphics that you see here, it is actually a continuation of the same process explaining about the formation of lightning. So once you know that uh, the stepped ladder is moving up, then there is another ladder that comes from the cloud all the way down. So the meeting point where the stepped ladder from the ground or from pointed objects such as houses and buildings meet is the point where this particular lighting occurs. And of course, as students or as learners or as people, we see only the lightning light, lighting light that's happening when that uh, lighting occurs. There are, of course, advantages to using uh, segmenting your, your lessons. First of all, the learner receives short clips of information, or maybe probably 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes, depending on the lesson itself, which, makes, which helps the learner to be able to learn at a pace that he can be able to learn. And of course, it allows him or her to be able to connect the concepts from each smaller unit to the next unit with ease. And remember, when you are creating such content, you have to include always a continue button that allows the learner to be able to navigate from the first unit that has been chunked to the next unit. And then again, segmenting principle allows the learner to engage essential processing without overloading the learner's cognitive systems. So your cognitive system will work better because each piece is presented in, with its information and each, the next piece is also presented with its information. But at the same time, there are also control buttons that allows you to be able to move from this particular first piece of information to the next piece of information. And this actually enhances your process of learning in the process. Now, remember that when you are creating these contents, uh, you are segmenting your unit or your lesson into pieces. What you, you have to remember is that always remember to provide control buttons. And these buttons could be like a continue button that allows the student to be able to move from the first piece of information to the next piece of information. But again, while she continues or he continues to the next slide, next piece of information, remember to put the buttons like back button or next button that allows the student to be able to move or to progress to the next units or to the previous unit, trying to connect the points in between the units, but again trying to connect the knowledge or the concepts that have been taught in the previous unit to the next unit. So in, in cases when you're using uh, video lectures or videos in your content, so you are developing e-learning content that is video-based. So in these cases also, you also need to chunk your videos. Do not provide a long video like 20 minute video or 50 minute video or one hour video. The, the longer the video, the longer the unit becomes, it becomes an overload to a working memory and therefore students don't lead more or follow up the lessons that are longer. And this, is, this has been proven by research. Uh, longer videos actually prevent learners from following up what is being taught. And therefore, whenever you're creating such lessons in terms of a video, remember to provide also control buttons. Make them shorter, but again, control buttons such as previous page to the next page that allows the learner to be able to navigate or move to the next piece of, of video that allows uh, the process of learning go as it is required. So as takeaways from this principle of segmenting, segmenting principle, always 
try to avoid complexity by breaking your lessons into smaller pieces that are manageable by your students and that can be able to allow your students to be able to learn better. But again, whenever you are breaking your pieces, you make sure that you are able to connect the points. So reduce the complexity, complexity by making sure that each p the, the pieces are connected to each other. The first concept should be able to connect the next concept, next concept should be able to connect the next concept, but in between the concepts, make sure that you're pu putting a continue button. Lastly, give your learners the ability to be able to review a topic, the ideas they have covered, so that they can be able to see or make sense of the materials that has been presented in terms of uh, bit-sized chunks or smaller, smaller pieces. Let us now discuss another important principle in multimedia learning. I will start by giving an example. So suppose you are creating a, an e-learning course or a content for your students and uh, this is um, an e-learning course of which you need to give introduction to your students. And you start with the following introduction. It takes a moment to think what could be the impact of this uh, lesson. So based on the uh, previous text that you have seen, you could be able to see that a lot of information has been directed to the student. It, it looks like it is more of uh, putting activities to your students than putting of a conversation. Now, the first rule of personalization states that use always conversation style of lighting than the formal style of lighting. If you want to replace this text that you have seen here, you could be able to remove all the, uh, to soften your content in such a way that you include the uh, first and second pronouns such as I, we, me, you, you are, so that it becomes much more of a conversation between you as the teacher and the student himself. If we want to change this, the previous version to the personalized version, this could start something like this. So if you look into this passage that is happening here, it, you could be able to see that there is some sort of human-to-human -human conversation that is happening between the learner and the content. Now look into the following image here. This is uh, an image that comes whenever you are nav navigating into one of the e-learning courses that has been prepared by one of the teachers. Now the, the page itself looks like you have an, an, a human-like image on the left part, and then you have text on the right that introduces you to the cause of the content itself. So it says like, hi, I am Mary, and welcome to this class. Today I will teach you about so and so and so and so, and therefore you will be able to learn and so and so and so and so, which implies therefore that this particular type of learning gives you a feel like you're talking to a normal human being, and this motivates you to keep, you, to keep learning. Therefore, uh, this principle is called uh, use on screen agents or pedagogical agents, to be able to help the learners be able to connect with the content much more easier. You may be uh, thinking about what are these pedagogical agents or what are these on-screen coaches. These are actually agents that can be pre presented like cartoon or that could be presented like virtual reality avatars. They are human-like or machine-like or printed text in the form of printed text that allows conversation between the learner and the content, uh, the learner towards the content when they are actually learning. So these agents can be represented, uh, representation of real people, or it could be the face of a real person that is actually happening or being shown on the, on the content, or it could be something like an artificial character that has been embedded into the course, or it could be some, some computer-generated voice that allows the learner to be able to move forward in a process that, that is more of human conversation than a process that is actually a formal way of pre presenting information. And this uh, use of pedagogical agents has advantages as well. First of all, it, it promotes and increases learner motivation because the learner becomes, feels like I belong to this particular lesson and I'm talking to a person. And then again, using these pedagogic agents, there is human voice that is coming up or there is human text that is coming up that is actually informal, that brings some sort of uh, informal conversation. And this again enhances the learning process of the students. So in the cases that you're using these on-screen agents or pedagogical agents, remember to use uh, indirect speeches and polite speeches than when we use direct statements. Instead of using the word place the next key, you would probably say, let us now place the next key. So there is a sense of indirect speech that is happening, but a polite way of connect to, connecting to your students. Or for example, again, another example could be you want to tell your students now, it's time now to find a denominator. You want to, you tell your students like, find a denominator. 
instead of using this statement, this direct statement, we could soften it by saying probably it's a time for you now to find a denominator of a number. Or uh, suppose you want to give you say like, please click the play, pause button. Instead of using this statement, we could easily say, if you are done, you might want to click the pause button to be able to, to think on the content. So such statements, polite statements and indirect statements are the ones that I encourage you to use when you are creating these contents. And therefore, uh, rule number three of personalization principle says that always use indirect speech and polite speech than when we can use the direct speech. So as takeaways now from this particular principle, the principle of personalization, we could be able to say that, so always when you are creating uh, contents, always keep the things simple by presenting the basic information in your conversation, in your content. So make everything as possible, as conversational as possible. Allow the learner to be able to have a touch, a human to computer touch that can make him or her feel like he's in the learning process. And then always make the author or the teacher visible. So this, whenever you're making these on-screen agents available or pedagogical agents available, it, this enhances the sense of learning and therefore the learner himself becomes motivated to be able to learn next because he can be able to hear or follow up the lesson much more easier. And finally, the uh, instruction should not present information alone, but always it should be able to prime the learner to be able to think of the previous knowledge she or she has so that she can be able to connect to, the, to what is happening in the next sessions. And this makes sense of learning and improves learning as well. Thank you.